Hi. In this video, we're going to talk about a data structure that will help us detect entities. And let's consider the following use case. When a user says something like, hello, my name is Vincent, then a very common use case might be that we want to have a machine learning system pick up the word Vincent here as an entity. The idea is that this is a person's name, which we want to detect so we can use it later. There's a lot of ways that you could go about detecting this exact name, but let's assume that we're just going to do the simple thing and that we're just going to cross-reference this with a name list. The idea is that we just take all the names in this name list and that we check whether or not it matches a token in the current text that we have up here. In Raza, you would be able to do this by having a lookup table and by using a regex entity extractor. Now, the way that this tool works is that it's using a regex to do the actual matching. It's a regex that is going to determine whether or not a name in this list is matching something in this text. But you could wonder, well, what happens if we have a name list here that's just very large? Are we going to incur a computational cost by using a regex here? And if so, what can we do to make it faster? To answer this question, let's consider a benchmark first. What I'll do is I'll go to the Raza NLU examples repository, and there you can find a name list directory where we have baby names from different parts of the world listed so you could go ahead and use them in an entity extractor. I will zoom in on the name list from the United States, which was originally retrieved from Kaggle, but the main thing that I would like to zoom in on is that this name list, although it's not complete, it's still pretty big. It has about 18,000 names in it. So if we were to use this name list to do entity extraction, how long might that take if we're using Python? Now let's do a small benchmark to quantify this. What I've got here is the names that I alluded to earlier. These are all the United States names. And what I'm doing is I'm loading in all of those names as a list of strings here in Python. Next, what I'm doing is I'm taking a string, this one, and for all intents and purposes, let's pretend that this is something the user just said, and we would like to get Vincent as well as Victor out. And we'd like to use the name list that we have over here. Well, then I can use the regex module inside of Python to find Vincent, and we can use the time it magic command to give us an impression how long it takes. Okay. Now note that what I'm doing here is I'm only checking whether or not the string Vincent appears in this line. But here's the thing about regexes. Regexes can do more than just a basic string match. Here I'm checking Vincent, but maybe I would also like to check Vincent with the capital letter V. What I'm showing you here is the domain specific language inside of a regex that allows you to more flexibly select a substring. But I also hope you appreciate that it's this flexibility as well that might be causing a performance hit. A regex does more than just basic string matching. It can do some extra things. So when I run this, we do see that there's a performance hit. In both of these situations though, I am just checking for one name. I'm checking if Vincent makes an appearance in the string, but I would like to fetch not just Vincent, but also Victor. So what I'll be doing next is I'll be using the regex search command again, but I'll now be applying that to this line for every name inside of this name list. And here's where the compute time might really start to grow. Now, I have about 18,000 names here, so definitely this is not a small set of names to compare against, but I hope you would appreciate that this will be a burden. This is over half a second, and if this were live in a virtual assistant, we would incur this computational cost for every message from every user that we get in. So at this point, it feels like the regex might just be a little bit impractical. Also, if I think about the problem, we might not need the regex. We don't need the special syntax like what I've shown you here. We can assume that all the characters are lowercased. 
And since we don't need the domain-specific language of the regex, then maybe we don't need the regex module at all, and instead we can just do basic string matching. So let's try that and compare against what we see here. If I replace the regex that I see over here with just basic string algorithms that we have in the Python string module, then we definitely notice a large speed up, roughly 200x. And that's great, but it does make you wonder, can we do something that's maybe even more clever? After all, this name list that we have over here, that is a list of names that we know ahead of time. And this find method that we have in Python here is not aware of all the name lists that are out there, so we might be able to do something with a clever indexing trick. Now, there's a library that indeed does something of a clever indexing trick, and the library is called Flash Text. It uses a clever tree data structure internally to make these sorts of queries much faster. So let's give a demo of Flash Text. I'm importing Flash Text over here. And in flash text, there is this object known as a keyword processor. What I'm doing before I do any querying of a string is I take my name list and I pass every name in that name list as a keyword in this keyword processor. That means that I have an object here that can start building an index of sorts before I actually start using it. And also that means that where I needed a list comprehension before, in order to grab all the different names from the name list in order to do the match, I can now just do this one call over here. Let's see how fast this is. Now, when we went from regex to string matching, we noticed a huge speed increase. But I would argue we're basically seeing the same thing happening here again. And I hope you agree, this is great news because it seems like we have a technique at our disposal to fetch entities with string matching in a way that we don't necessarily have to care too much about how big our name list is. And that's something that can be quite useful, not just for names of persons, but maybe also product IDs and product names. But before moving to an implementation for Flash Text in Raza, let's briefly discuss how Flash Text is able to get this great performance in the first place. So let's see if we can get a gut feeling on how you might be able to index strings in an interesting way. Let's suppose that we have a start point, And from the start point, we might be entering one of the names in our index. After seeing start, we might, for example, hit the letter V. After which, we might hit the letter I, then N, all the way down until we have Vincent in full. And if we ever have a string where we are going to follow this path exactly, then once we hit this endpoint t, then we know that we've seen Vincent. But we can also do the same thing with Victor. And let's assume that, of course, we are doing this for all the names in our name list. So we would also have Linda in here, for example. Now, assuming we have a tree like this, here's the clever thing. Suppose I have a sentence like, hello, I am Vincent. What we can then imagine is that we have a frog, so to say. And at the start of the sentence, the frog starts on this part of the tree. Then as we are moving forward in the sentence, the frog is going to see the letter H in this example. And it is going to check, hey, is there an arc that will give me the letter H from where I currently am? If that's the case, then it would jump. And if that's not the case, then it will just stay where it is. In this small tree that we have now, we would stay put all the way up until we hit the letter V. At this phase, we would actually move to the letter V over here. And given that we are at the letter V over here, the next letter would be I. And from the perspective of the frog, the frog from the position that it's at can actually go ahead and make the jump to the letter I. And I hope that you see that if we repeat this process, it's going to keep on jumping until it hits the end state over here. And the idea is that whenever we hit the end state, that we found a match of the string, 
And what we'll then do is we will move the jumping frog back to the start over here. Let's now suppose the sentence was a little bit different. Let's say it wasn't Vincent, but maybe it was Vinny. And in this case, what would happen? Well, we would still end up over here. If you retrace the steps, that's hopefully clear. But from the position that we are here now, there is no path to another N. So that means that we would have to move the frog back to the start of the graph once more. Now what I hope you appreciate that's really clever here is that we basically only have one pointer that we are moving around in our graph, but we don't need to have any extra data structure. In the case of a regex or a name list, effectively what we had to do is we had to say, well, we've got Victor and Vincent and Linda and all the other names that will be in our name list. And one by one, we would have to check whether or not it is in this string. So for every element in our list, we would incur a computational cost. Whereas the idea with this graph data structure is that we can just stream through this string once instead of multiple times. And because our frog is able to jump back when it needs to, we are still guaranteed to, whenever we hit the end state over here, declare that we found a match. And it's this graph kind of data structure that Flash Text is using internally to make sure that we don't waste any time looking for these strings in our text. Which I would argue is a really neat trick to make sure that we don't waste any compute resources. Now, we should observe that this trick will mainly be of benefit if we have a very big name list. If we had the situation where there would only be a few names, then building up this index wouldn't be worth the overhead. But assuming that we are indeed dealing with a large name list, then this trick might be very useful. And again, the reason why we're able to apply this trick is because we are doing string matching. We don't have to use regexes here. We're able to build up this index because we're just dealing with one-to-one -one string matching. So if you're interested in trying out this flash text technique inside of Raza, then you'll be happy to know that my colleague, Felicia, made an implementation of exactly this. So if you go to the Raza NLU examples repository, you can find the implementation documented. And from here, you should be able to use very large lookup tables to fetch entities by string matching. What Felicia also did was create this benchmark repository that demonstrates the speed up that you might be able to get. It contains a Raza project, so you can run the benchmark yourself if you're interested. And there's also this chart that confirms what kind of speed up you might be able to expect. The main thing to observe is that as the number of lookup patterns increases, the regex entity extractor seems to have this linear growth pattern. The more that we add, the longer that it might take. If, however, we are using the flash text entity extractor instead, then we notice that we barely incur any extra computational costs. So feel free to try out this flash text entity extractor if you think it solves a problem for you, and let us know if you have any feedback on it.